Hi, welcome to People Tools Tech Tips. I'm Randy Gronke. Today we're going to create an XML file using the file layout object in People Code. So creating an XML file with the file layout object. Pretty straightforward. We're going to create a row set using records that replicate basically the structure of the XML file that we want to output. Okay? Then we're going to create a file layout object and inside that we're going to replicate that same data structure as the row set inside there. In our code we're going to load up our original row set, massage the data as needed, then we're going to instantiate a file, assign our file layout object to that, then extract the row set out of it, then copy the data from one row set straight over to the other row set in one command. Write our file, close the file, and we have everything we need. So why not use PS Query? Well, I've already ranted about this, but let's make it real quick. It's inefficient. As per this Oracle support document, you should be using XML files for your larger reports. It's insecure, and other users can get a hold of it and change your queries. And if this is going to a BI publisher, we want to put the reports where the users expect to see them. Let's get started and create an XML file with the file row set object. Before we get coding, let's take a look at where we're going with this example. We're going to go to our utility here, and now we're going to put all our code behind this button. And basically what that code is going to do is going to, one, it's going to load up our row set with all our employee training data. Then we're going to create a file layout object, and that file layout object is going to have the exact same structure as that row set. And then we're going to open a file, attach the file layout object to the file, copy the data from the row set of the data into the file object row set, then we're going to write that out to a file. Then we're going to close and open that file, get the string out there, and put it into this box right here. We'll put the file name right here. We're also going to pop that file up to the um, new tab so we can see it. Now this log file utility, we're going to be able to see that this file is out here in this directory, this XML file created by that file layout object. Let's take a look and see it happen. Click our button. Now here's our file. This is formatted by Chrome, not by the file layout object. File layout object just does a straight XML, not formatted XML. XML files location on the server. And if we come out here, that location, we can see that our file layout XML file is right here on the server. Same location as that. So let's go about building this. Okay, let's first take a look at this app package that we're going to use for several of our demonstrations. And the bottom line is this, this just loads up a parent-child row set with employee data and that employee's training for a letter out to the employees. So let's take a look at the class load test data. Standard class, we have our constructor and our constructor does nothing. So we really didn't need it there. The heart of this is the load test data set method. And you'll notice that method returns a row set, not a string, but actually a row set. So this method down here, load employee image, is for a later session we're going to have. We're going to show you how to put employee photos into row sets as base64 strings and push them into BI Publisher. But not now. Stay tuned. So let's look at our load test data set. Our variables are records we're declaring here. We're going to do one of the great things we can do with the row set method, and that is enriching the data after we do our initial pull, which is so much better than query because query, you have to eat everything in one bite. We can get a little bit and then go and enrich just that little bit faster and much more efficient. So here we create the rows, complex row set. You know that when we create a parent child, we have to start with the child row set and then once we have the child row set, we create the parent row set with the child row set as a parameter. We have fill because it's a created row set. It's not a, a select. It's a fill. And we're saying, give me all the employees that start with KU00 and have training. Now, once we have that parent filled, we have all those rows, but none of our child row sets are populated. So let's go each one in turn for I equals one to row set employees active row count. And for each row of the parent, we're going to come down here, get the child row set, 
and then fill that row set where the employee equals the parent. So here's the cool stuff. Just to show you some examples, this is maybe not the best example, but we can do it here. Get data from other records per each record and row and start populating that where it's significant to that data. Here, we're getting some job information for that employee, okay? Here, we're getting some location information for that employee. We're going to location table, put the location information, get select by key effective date, and then we're setting the location description to description from the table, all right? Some company information, the company description to put it in there. We're gonna look at the job code information for that employee, the job code descriptions. Now, granted, somebody's saying there, yeah, we could have done with that with PS Query with a massive five table join and stuff. However, I wanted to show you how you could do it here quicker, and more efficient, and you don't bog down your database with one huge byte. You don't have to eat the whole elephant in one byte. At the end there, we return a row set. We're going to create our file layout definition now. New file layout. Now, we want our structure inside the file layout to exactly replicate the structure inside that row set so it's easy to push from one to the other. So, our records. Now, this was our employee data table. One row per employee about their information and each employee had one or more training classes they took. This record. So, this is the parent. Move this to here. This is the child. Move that to here. Notice I'm here on this bottom record, not the top level. And we're going to make that a child. Go to properties, change the type to XML, and then we'll save. Here's some things we can do it with our file layout object. That's really cool. So let's go back to properties. We'll go back to use. Now, this file definition tag, what that is, is the high level node inside the XML file. If you put nothing here, it'll be just start default there. But what we can do is put our own high level no node name. Okay, so now we know this is going to output to an XML file. Here's our fields in there. And what we can do here is actually change the tag name. So we're gonna do that with the child and we're gonna come out to this course title and we're gonna change that tag name to just title. And we're gonna save that. And that's all there is with our file layout definition. Let's put the code on our button to generate this XML file. So we know that going on this button file layout and we can see that that's XXML file work, file layout. So, come to here, field change. First thing, let's put our notes in. We wanna add our class with our loading our test data. Next, we're gonna declare all our variables. Now, we're instantiating the object for the loading to test data. Then we got our file, which is the XML file. We have a row set, so we're gonna load our strings of the fully qualified path of our file once we get it, and also our XML. And these are the fields on the page that we're gonna load up with the file name and the XML out. First thing we wanna do is load our row set. Then we're gonna get our file. Make note we're gonna do UTF-8 character set so we can get all those XML characters in there that just ask you to create problems. Next, we're gonna set our file layout. File that set file layout, layout right there. And here's what we can do. We can just drag this and put that right there. Next step is to get the row set from the file layout. So we set the, created a file, we set the file layout that had defined that row set in there, that parent child row set of the employee in the training. And this row set we're gonna extract from that file. Here's some of the magic. We're gonna copy the data from the row set we loaded to the row set inside the file layout object. And what we're doing here is we're declaring a clear mapping, which records go to which records. So file row set we're copying, EE report letter view goes to EE report letter view. 
X training view goes to X training view. Now you don't need this all the time, but it does help sometimes you get some pile errors. It doesn't want to go straight over. This is how you fix those errors. We write row set, bam, our XML file is created. But before we do anything else, let's get the fully qualified path of that file from the file object. And the next step is to close the file. Okay, at that point, we're pretty much done. Now we're gonna do the nice things for our screen. So what we're gonna do is open up that file again as a get file. We got our path from up here. We're gonna read and we would need apps file path absolute, not relative. So we're telling it exactly where to get it. Then we're just gonna get string from the file and put it into our variable. And then we're gonna close the file again. So we open, we wrote, we closed. We open, we read, we closed. Let's set the field values in the page. We have the long field, which is the XML, file name path value, which is the file fully qualified path. Now the last thing, just for this demonstration, we're going to pop that file we just created up to a new tab. So we'll use the put attachment for the fully qualified path. We'll put into our file attach custom record out there. Next thing to do is save, clear your think time, Last thing to do is do a view attachment and pop that up. At this point, we're done. Okay, let's see our code in action. Okay, there's your button. Here's our file, again, formatted by Chrome. There's our title tag that we changed from course title. Come back to here to our page. We have our XML string as the file layout created it, and we have our fully qualified file name. Go out to our files. And there's our file layout.xml, which is our file same as that. Let's review real quick what we did. We created some row sets, we loaded them up. We created a file layout object, and that had the same exact data structure as those row sets. We copied the row sets over to the file layout object, we wrote our file. Then we could pull the XML string out of the file, put it in a page, we could get the fully qualified file name from the file object, and we could see that that file was written to the server. We popped it up and saw the XML in a new tab. You have everything you need to create an XML file with the file layout object. Now, all our People Tools projects and guide on what we did today is on peopletoolstechtips.com. Look for the blog post talking about creating an XML file with the file layout object. Like and comment below. Please consider subscribing to our channel. We'll see you next time here on People Tools Tech Tips.